Hello, and welcome to Automotive Tales. Today, we are on an adventure to find a car that I regret selling. But not for me. The person I bought the car from also regretted selling it. So we're off today to buy it back. I have a question for you. Have you ever regretted selling a car? I certainly have. Uh, one particular car I really regret selling was uh, a BMW E30 325i convertible. It was a beautiful machine. Um, uh, but unfortunately, necessity meant I had to get rid of the car. I had to pay for a new roof on my house. Kind of important. Uh, but I really wish I hadn't sold it. So I had one car that meant a lot to me, probably about, uh, well, between 12 and had it 15 till 10 years ago, um, and that was a beautiful E30 blue 325i convertible. Um, and that got me through a lot of um, interesting times. Uh, it was my go-to daily driver for driving to hospital, um, where I was working very hard as a junior doctor at the time. Um, and I've missed it daily since I've sold it. So if you hadn't guessed, we're talking about the same car. So many, many years ago, I bought said E30 from Ian. Hi. <laughs> and I unfortunately had to sell it, which I regret. And Ian regrets selling the car to me as well. So today, we've hunted the car down and we're going to go and see it. The twist to that is Ian is actually going to buy the car back after 15 years? No, not quite that long. About, uh, about nine years. Nine years. Um, and he says we've hunted it down. What he actually means is that after he sold it, he forgot the number couldn't give me any leads apart from that it had been sold in London. Um, so I've spent the last five years going in a spiral outside London using Google Maps, going through enthusiast garages, um, looking for uh, photos of what they're selling, uh, of, of what they're working on at the time. And there's one particular um, garage called, shall I say the name? Yeah, yeah right. um, I'm sure they'll probably be happy with the advertising, called uh, <laughs> EMP uh, Performance. EMP Performance. And they um, are... Uh, they do power flow exhaust and, or, or decent exhaust. I don't know if power flow is the brand name or not. Um, and they were absolutely lovely when I spoke to them, having found uh, a photo from February 2020 um, with my beloved old E30, well, the new owner's beloved uh, E30, having uh, its exhaust replaced. And they um, got in contact with that owner and asked if he was willing to consider selling it. And uh, that's the story from then really that's what's brought us to here yeah. so today we're road tripping not just to see the car but to buy the car back well I've already bought it actually <laughs> I've, I've taken him on trust and paid the money up front uh, by bank transfer so let's hope we get there and find that he exists and the car is there <laughs> yeah otherwise it might be quite a short video <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> with some tears yeah so no tire kicking today it's uh, the commitment has already been made but I think the commitment was probably made in the five years of hunting for the car. What's it's, not, it's not the best um, situation as a negotiator to be in. Having wronged someone, asked to buy their car, said you don't mind what state it is in, but you'll pay to get it back. Um, I don't think there's going to be much haggling because um, I've got no legs to stand on really. Yeah, rule 101 of being a shrewd negotiator is not to tell them that you really want the car and you've been hunting for this exact car for five years. But, you know, needs must, right? Yeah, well, I don't think I'd have got it otherwise. Um, Holly. It had a name called Holly. Um, Holly. 
uh, which I don't think John ever took on. I didn't um, realise that was yeah. that was the car's name. And also on a, on a very personal level, um, I've had a lot of stuff going my, on in my family um, in terms of people get ill and some of whom are no longer with us. And so this car harks back to a time for me when, um, before all that happened, um, with uh, it was the car I drove to my wedding in. Um, it's it's I got did not a, know that. it's got a lot of connection um, to me, and it's been in every it's been in every house I've ever lived with lived in, except for my current one. And so uh, part of me just wanted to bring it home, really, I guess. Um, and um, my I, I've got an eight year old daughter; she's very excited to to meet the car. Um, <laughs> I'm vaguely fantasising about converting it to manual one day and having a learn to drive in it, but um, we'll we'll see. You know, cross one bridge at a time. <laughs> sold it I've missed it I mean I sold it for the standard reasons that the actual person who's selling it this time is is selling it for you know child on the way thinking about safety um, so I learned from seeing how E30s crash um, that I was scared of, of being in one when it crashed and then over the years I've learned that it's much more about how you drive safely that um, yeah. determines whether you get in a bad accident I guess the difference is Back then, you were using an E30, as I was, yeah. uh, as a daily driver, um, yeah. because they were a good, cheap, and actually, at that time, a fairly robust car. But yeah. compared to modern cars today, I mean, we're in a we're in a modern Volvo. It doesn't probably get any safer than that, I don't think. And these cars, it's, these cars now, you know, the E30s now. Back then, they were a cheap car that you could run every absolutely. day. And now um, they're beginning to feel a bit special. They're beginning to feel a little bit flimsy when you're in them and they're beginning to feel a, a bit like an old car that you're driving as an event, um, as, as a classic yeah, car. Yeah, and I guess you, and you adjust your driving appropriately. Yeah, and the prices are changing to match, aren't they? I mean... I sold it to John. Um, for five hundred pounds, knowing that it was worth three or four thousand, but the reason I sold it to John was because I knew he'd look after it and I knew he'd keep it on the road and he'd maintain it, and I knew it was worth more than that. But I didn't really care because I just needed it gone so that I could focus on a different stage of life. I know he then sold it on for, I assume he might he might dive all in a half, maybe four thousand. So I yeah, so I bought the car from from Ian. Uh, I did do some work on it, so it went to the body shop. To have some paint on the front end because it was it was showing you know a little bit of mileage related um, stone chips and the likes on the front, um, and we did some bits with the the bumpers. As anybody that's owned an E30 or an E28, you'll know the bumpers that are chrome rot from the inside out. So we replaced a load of those. Uh, did you know, wheel bearings and a few other obligatory items, um, and I ran it for a couple of years and I sold it for three seven fifty I think in the end, which is. <sighs> Uh, annoying because the bill for the new roof that my house needed came to three thousand seven hundred and forty nine pounds. Oh, I kid you not. Had a, you had a pound left. I, I ended up with a pound out of the deal, uh, um, but it did pay for a new roof of my house, so I'm very grateful for that. And if you look at the prices of uh, Tech One kits nowadays, um, yeah. you probably made a fair bit back off that. So um, can we just take a second to to understand? I bought an E thirty three two five Cabriolet for five hundred pounds, and you bought prior to that you bought an E30 320 Mordor for what was it how much did you pay for that 250 200, can we just take a second to remember when you could buy an E30 for three figure values i.e. hundreds of pounds that's a sobering thought Just join the M25. It's, it's it. What are the chances of pulling up behind H430 ELC? <laughs> it's it. What 
Watford. Uh, the current owner and the previous previous owner, Ian, have gone inside to sort out the paperwork in the V5. So we're going to have a quick look around the car and then we'll talk a little bit about the story. So let's go have a look. So this is this is the car that Ian sold to me, um, which you can't see because I'm behind the camera, who sold to Nick, who is hiding behind Ian, uh, is trying to stay off camera, um, who uh, we hunted down for want of a better description, in fact, it's actually a very apt description, um, to find this exact car so Ian could buy it back. Yeah. So after, I think we worked it out before, is it 12 years? You keep lengthening it, nine years. Nine years, it's yeah. nine years. Time flies when you're getting old. Um, so for nine years, it's changed hands between the three of us. It's now back to where it started, which I suspect it's where it's going to stay for the rest of its life. Um, yeah, it's a family heirloom now. Heirloom? Heirloom. Um, so, so you've had the car for a number of years. Yep. Um, I guess you, you didn't have a, an intention on selling it, but Ian hunted I you did. down. He hunted me down and, uh, you know, told me the story behind him, him owning it previous to uh, myself and you. Um, and yeah, rather than selling it on potentially in the future, it's gone back to a good home. It's done okay. another couple of projects, although I'm very sad to see it go. I, I dare say from experience, you may well regret selling it. Ian well, regretted selling it to me. I think I will. I think I'm going to still think after this. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Got some good memories, but you know, it will live on, for sure. Very good, yeah, it certainly will. I think, Ian, you've got some pretty good plans for the car. You're hoping to, uh, to do some further restoration work to it. Yeah. Um, you were hoping to convert it to a manual, um, but as you've probably seen in the video already, That's Nick has already done that for us. Um, you've got a nice M Sport Gator and uh, yeah. gear knob on there. It's got Fritz Bits manifold, which if you're into your E30s, you'll know exactly what that's all about. And a uh, power flow stainless on it now. It's got an EMP custom exhaust. Uh, EMP custom. Very nice. So we'll see in a minute what that sounds like. Come on then, Ian. Time to jump in your new car. Where am I going? Um, start her up. Just as a van goes past. Go. Perfect timing. And with that, it was time to make the long road trip north with all the different weather that the UK can throw at us. It's a beautiful summer's evening. Uh, well, it wasn't, it's been tipping it down, but it is now a beautiful summer's evening. And uh, Ian is heading on off into the sunset with his E30, very happy indeed. Uh, it's a great story to see a car I used to own and I regret selling, and somebody fulfilling that dream of buying back the car they really miss. Uh, if you have a similar story, by all means, uh, bleep bloop in the commenty thing below and let us, uh, let us know what's the car you regret selling and have you seen it since? Have you even bought that car back? Well, that's all for us, so uh, we'll see you next time. Oh, and uh, do please like, share, subscribe, wherever the buttons are. Bye. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Do, do you think everyone who's watching, all, all seven people of them, um, <laughs> do you think they... you've, you've seen my channel then? Sorry, yeah. yes. <laughs>